Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the next webinar in our webinar series. Um, today, uh, Federica Battistini uh, is going to be talking about NAFLEX, a web server for the study of nucleic acid flexibility. Uh, my name is Adam Carter, so I'll be hosting this uh, webinar. So I'll just use this time for, for a couple of minutes to tell you very briefly about BioXL for anyone who's not familiar with the, the center and, and what we do. Uh, and then I'll hand over to our, our speaker today who will speak for the rest of today's webinar. Just a quick note to let you know that this slide, uh, this webinar is being recorded, including the Q&A session at the end. Uh, so uh, you should be aware of that and we will post the recordings afterwards on YouTube and the BioXL website. So for anyone who's not familiar, um, BioXL uh, is a new center of excellence uh, and we're, we've got three sort of main areas in which we're working. We sometimes refer to them as the three pillars of BioXL. One thing this center of excellence is hoping to do is to improve the performance and efficiency and scalability of some key codes that are used um, to do biomolecular research in Europe. In particular, we have developers from the Gromax code for MD simulations, from Haddock for docking, and also for, from uh, CPMD, people working on the QMMM interface for, for this code. So that the key codes are part of what we do, but another important aspect is usability. So as well as improving the software in terms of functionality and performance, we want to make sure that all the codes are usable. And an important aspect of that uh, is the, how they can be used as part of wider uh, analysis workflows and um, workflows is something that is key to, to the project too. Finally, we have a work package or a couple of work packages involving consultancy and training. So we very much are interested in hearing from our end users and what you're working on, what you're interested in. Uh, that helps to define the direction that the center of excellence is going in. Uh, to that end, we have a number of interest groups uh, that may be of interest to you. Um, the list is on screen at the moment. Um, so if you're interested in any of these, please do go to our website and you can uh, join up those interest groups and find out more about what we're doing in these areas. We will have um, our main talk today, which uh, will probably run straight through from beginning to end. And you'll have some opportunity to ask questions at the end of the webinar. Um, you can do that using the questions tool uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel that looks similar to what you can see on the screen at the moment. Um, not identical, but you can ask your question here and then I can either, if you have a microphone, open it up um, and uh, invite you to ask your question to Federica directly, or uh, I can read out your question so that you get a chance to, uh, so that Federica can, can answer your question. Finally, if you're watching this presentation online, uh, so you haven't got a chance to ask your question live, do please go to our discussion forum at askbioexcel.eu, where you can leave a question or leave a comment and, and we'll get back to you about that. So now um, I'm going to shortly hand over to Federica. Federica Battistini is a postdoc fellow uh, in Modesto Orozco's group in the Structural and Computational Biology Program of the Institute for Research in Biomedicine, that's IRB, in Barcelona. She the, has the background of a physical computational chemist, but she has also worked in the field of biology. Um, her undergraduate and master's degrees uh, were in physical organic chemistry um, from the University of Milan. And then she did her PhD, um, also in physical organic chemistry um, at the University of Sheffield. Uh, with Professor Christopher Hunter. So and that was a theory-based approach to understand sequence effects on nucleosome positioning in chromatin. Since 2010, uh, she, her postdoc position, she's, her research has focused on the study of nucleic acid dynamics at the molecular level and the sequence effects on the physical and chemical properties of these biomolecules, as well as epigenic, uh, epigenetic effects. And um, Federica has been involved in several collaborative projects with Barcelona Supercomputer Center, and uh, she's also been involved in some of the work that we've been doing here 
in BioExcel. So she's very well placed to give today's webinar. Um, and I'm now going to hand over to, to Federica. Thank you very much. So if I just make you the presenter, Federica, um, you should be able to, to take it from here. I hold. Yes, here you go. Thank you. So, um, during uh, this webinar, I will present you uh, NFLEX uh, web server. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, web server uh, for studying uh, nucleic acid uh, flexibility, isolated or bound to other molecules. Nucleic acids have been uh, at the first level are described by their sequence and in the last decades many sequencing techniques allow us to have more and more information at the genomic scale. But uh, as uh, polymeric um, and polymorphic uh, molecules, uh, this info about the sequence is not enough to understand their role in uh, biological and molecular function. For this, one of the uh, information that we need to understand their function is uh, uh, the structure of the polymorphic and, uh, and um, uh, polymers of DNA that uh, strictly depends on the sequence, is uh, not uh, an ideal BDNA but depends on the sequence and each base pair is characterized by a determined flexibility and geometry. The study of the structure of the DNA uh, will um, will bring us to have more knowledge and allow us uh, to understand many biological processes. For example, the function uh, for um, uh, protein recognition, protein DNA binding, and uh, uh, the um, genome positioning of protein and of nucleosome. As you can see here at the bottom, here you can see the structure, for example, of a nucleosome with the DNA wrapped around the histones. And uh, in this case, Sorry. And uh, in this case, uh, you will see how um, different sequences of uh, DNA will position a nucleosome and other won't. And this is related just to the properties of DNA. Uh, for uh, this reason, it um, uh, will be impossible to have experimental data on every possible DNA sequence and in every possible complex. So in absence of experimental approach, uh, simulation technique are, vi are widely used and accepted tools to um, describe the nucleic acid structure and flexibility. For this reason, we developed and implemented a NFLEX uh, server tool uh, to study the properties of nucleic acid in its conformational its conformational and flexibility properties in silico. And also to facilitate the use of uh, nucleic acid simulation tools for newcomers to the field. Um, here you can see uh, in uh, this slide how is um, Nanoflex is divided mainly in three parts. That is the input part, the, uh, no, the simulation engines, and the analysis tools. Um, Nanoflex is part uh, of a um, multi-scale genomic project and uh, BioExcel. Uh, I will go through each phase, but I will focus mainly on the uh, flexibility analysis part and uh, I will uh, show some uh, results where we directly apply NFLEX for to solve or to shed some, light, shed some light on biological problems. So starting from the input, in NFLEX the possible input is uh, the sequence of the DNA or the DNA in complex with uh, molecules uh, for ligands or proteins from the structure that can be from the protein data bank, so a nuclei, an NMR or X-ray crystal structure, or from trajectory that have been run independently by the user, or from save project, projects from um, NFLEX. Um, here I'm showing you what you will see in the web page, so in the web server of NFLEX. Uh, so the simulation can be run starting, as I say, from a structure. There will be the setup and the run on ND simulation. In NFLEX are um, implemented two ways of running an MD simulation, and I will go through uh, the different uh, simulation engine uh, briefly. 
uh, then uh, the analysis can start directly from an MD trajectory that can be converted and can be used to analyze all the uh, flexibility and uh, nucleic acid uh, uh, structure um, in the uh, in the web server and uh, can uh, just start uh, the, the the analysis of the um, of the nucleic acid can start just from a DNA or RNA sequence then there is um, a way uh, a software implemented to build the structure and from that to run the simulation or as I say uh, starting directly from a saved um, NFLEX uh, project what are the simulation engine that have uh, been implemented into the NFLEX server? So there are two possibilities. Um, there is the possibility of running and set up um, oh, sorry, or running and set up of uh, um, an MD simulation at atomistic level, so uh, with an atomistic representation, and uh, in this case, the um, the description of the molecule is very accurate. The problem is that it's very co is uh, computationally expensive. Uh, to allow to um, the user to run an MD simulation uh, has been integrated and directly connected MD web, MD web technology that uh, help the user uh, during the setup, the equilibration and the preparation of the input file for the simulation. Here you can see some of the steps for preparing and the setting up the minimization of the system, the equilibration of the system and usually there is uh, the molecule into a solvent box and uh, the addition, the, with the addition of ions. Uh, if you have uh, any more information about MD Web, there is a um, um, BioXL presentation webinar uh, done by Adam Hospital about uh, MD Web, how to set up the system and how to um, prepare an MD simulation. So uh, NFLEX is directly connected with MD Web and a small trajectory can be obtained or uh, can uh, the user can download all the input files and then run the uh, simulation. The simulation, the trajectory uh, can be visualized and then analyzed with all the nucleic acid specific tools. Another option, and here I'm going to describe the other option, is to describe, to um, define to represent the DNA um, with the uh, coarse grain uh, models. So you can see here on the left uh, the double strand DNA uh, with uh, the definition at uh, atom level with the backbone and the uh, base pair. So the backbone defined by the phosphate group and the sugar and the uh, bases that are the form the base pair. Here is um, um, the definition of the uh, coarse grain model uh, where uh, the DNA is represented by few uh, spherical bits connected by spring. Um, in this case, in this representation, the bits uh, are represented by the phosphate, the sugar and the base. So we have uh, two algorithms to analyze a coarse grain simulation uh, that is uh, at the level of uh, the nucleic, uh, nucleotide base level, that is the mesoscopic class C model, and another method that is um, at uh, M base uh, level, that is the worm like chain model. I will not go into details, but just to show you the two possibilities. Uh, one is a Metropolis Monte Carlo algorithm um, uh, associated to the helical parameters. I will go through the description of the helical parameter, but mainly is the movement between the base pair and is obtained um, using an harmonic uh, approximation of uh, the movement of the base pair along the um, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in the DNA. The worm-like chain uh, model used a, a Monte Carlo algorithm and considered one bit for each four base, uh, for, uh, each, uh, four base pair steps. Um, it's important to say that the user can also change the resolution and uh, here there are some like technical details like the biochemical equation taking into account implicit solvent, ionic concentration, there is a uniform charge of the DNA, um, but mainly is uh, to uh, consider, um, we use like a Monte Carlo, um, this course model mainly to describe system that have long chain of DNA where um, the um, implication of uh, molecular dynamic simulation at atomic level will uh, be 
too computationally expensive and will be in uh, with the dynamics that will take too long in uh, in time. Uh, the first part and is the one that I'm going to spend more time uh, during this uh, webinar is the analysis uh, tool, the part of the analysis tool. Uh, that, as I said before, are strictly uh, sequence-dependent um, physical properties. So the analysis of the uh, sequence-dependent physical properties. Um, uh, the NFLEX uh, analysis tools are divided into the standard Cartesian analysis, that are analysis that are standard when analyzing um, um, molecular trajectory that um, is usually the RMSD, so the Rutman square, uh, root square standard uh, square deviation from the starting conformation, a radius of duration, B factor. But mainly in NFLEX, what you could find, what you will find is a set of uh, different uh, flexibility analysis for just nucleic acid. Um, it's important to say that uh, uh, all of these uh, tools, all these analysis that I'm going to, I'm going to go through, uh, have a common interface. They don't need uh, additional expertise. There is an easy visualization, and there is always a help uh, uh, window for information on the calculation and on the software that have been used. Every analysis can be plotted in uh, um, along the time, so time course along the trajectory, or can be plot uh, just the average value of the analysis that you are running, and have been also integrated in the um, in the um, in the final results, uh, literature and experimental data that allow the user to have a direct co um, comparison and to check many times the validity of the results. All the raw data that have been calculated can be uh, downloaded. Um, now I will go through the different tools, and uh, um, I will start with the macroscopic descriptor of the DNA, and then I will go to the uh, micro uh, descriptor of analysis of the uh, nucleic acid in general, or mainly the DNA. Uh, here you can see um, that the microscopic analysis involved the uh, base pair parameter, and now I will explain what they defined. Uh, and there is the final curve analysis because curves is the program that we are using to analyze the geometry and the uh, stiffness of the of the uh, DNA. Um, we have analysis of the principal components so of the motion of the main uh, vector, the motion of the DNA. And then I'm going through a microscopic descriptor uh, that can be connected with NMR study, um, hydrogen bond uh, and distance analysis, and, uh, and energetic analysis at atomic level. Um, let's start from the uh, microscopic descriptor that are the helical parameters at the stiffness contest. Um, DNA can be described at uh, the base level by building blocks that uh, characterize the six possible movements between the bases, as in this case where we describe the movement at the base step uh, level. And here you can see the three uh, translational movement, shear, stretch, and stagger, and the three rotational buckle, propeller, and opening. And the same can be done at the base per step level, where we can describe uh, the geometry and the flexibility of, of each base pair by six movements, three translational, or shift, slide, and rise, and three rotational movements, tilt, roll, and twist. Um, these descriptors are very useful to describe the overall geometry of the DNA and the macroscopic distortion of the DNA. Now I will show you an example of how the variation of one of these parameters can be connected directly to a biological example and how um, can be understood better why we are using this descriptor. So this descriptor is the roll angle, is one of the base per step parameter um, that explain uh, one rotational movement. And here from the Caladine Drew representation, you can see that when we have a straight DNA, if we apply the roll angle at two points, we start to have a kinked structure of the DNA. But if we apply the roll uh, like a periodic function, we will have a bent DNA. Why is it important to, um, to be able to characterize the geometry of this uh, of this uh, movement, because as you can see here, 
uh, is one of the a main property of the DNA to be able to adapt uh, to uh, the uh, to adapt the structure for the binding on the property. And role is one of the parameters that um, is one of the most uh, uh, flexible and allows the DNA to adapt to this complex. Um, here, for example, we can see that DNA is highly bent and full, uh, almost like the, uh, this uh, drawing. Uh, bent uh, uh, conformation, and so the comparison between a straight DNA and ideal DNA and uh, uh, the conformation in this complex will allow us to get more information about where their distortion are, and also which step have been more distorted than the other. They probably are also connected with their ability to uh, be um, uh, to be flexed and to be uh, distorted. Um, Going back to the uh, web server, this is the intergraphic um, graphic interface that the user will face. So, for uh, after uploading or after calculating a trajectory using curves, we will uh, the NFLEX will analyze the helical parameters, and what the user will be facing is the sequence, the first strand for free prime to free prime, and the um, the other sample for uh, uh, free prime to five prime on the other sense. So what the user will do is to select the base pair that is interested in to analyze the base pair, and what we'll get is uh, the values that can be uh, the average results or the results by time. As I say before, for each analysis we will have the uh, time course and the average results. For the average results, as you can see for each base pair, here plotted the um, results for the user. Here you will see like role user MD average, the average. And these uh, values are not alone, but as I say before, have been compared with a uh, database of uh, um, DNA equilibrium geometries, that is ABC, and uh, from the X-ray average. So uh, the user could see if uh, the DNA that have been studied is closer, for example, to the equilibrium uh, uh, canonical B-DNA or um, is as some places where um, the DNA has more distortion and how it's uh, closer or far away to the uh, X-ray averages. Uh, the other way to um, visualize the data is, as I say, for each uh, base pair parameters is um, along the time. This is the time snapshot, so the time of the trajectory. Here is the value of roll, so you could see the user can see if there is a big variation or if it's a, a stable step, and all the results are summarized here. This is the distribution of all the values along the um, along the simulation, and the user could see that mainly you will uh, see a uh, um, Gaussian distribution, because uh, the base pair parameter have usually a, a normal distribution, and this is very important because in some cases uh, it will be easier with using this graphical interface uh, to analyze and to spot a base pair that has binormality or have two different minima or have different uh, conformation that are equally um, probable. Because uh, uh, the base pair parameters have a, a Gaussian distribution, harmonic distribution along uh, the time, uh, it's possible to analyze uh, and to extract from uh, this distribution um, the stiffness constant. Um, I won't go into detail. If you have any questions, you will see in the help session of the um, NFLEX server or um, you can ask me later or in uh, the BioExcel forum, but mainly the uh, stiffness constant uh, are the um, constant that describe the stiffness of each base pair for the six different movements, and uh, is described by a matrix of 36 element, 36 uh, constant is a diagonal matrix with pure um, term on the on the diagonal and mixed term between the different uh, parameters, and uh, this matrix uh, can be calculated by the inversion of the covariant matrix obtained from either uh, from the analysis of the MG directory, so from the difference along the time of the MG directory. This is the Boltzmann constant of Boltzmann. This is a temperature 
and this is the uh, covariance matrix. But mainly what we're focusing on are the diagonals, so the pure term, and they describe the flexibility of each step um, along uh, the, the sequence. Why it is uh, very important to know the um, the stiffness constant. So here is the representation that uh, you will find in the um, in the web page and uh, in this matrix that is uh, 36, as I say, um, el uh, elements, as I say, uh, 36 values is a diagonal matrix, and in darker red is shown the um, constant that has the highest value, so the uh, stiffest uh, value. I have to remind that. Uh, um, translational and rotational movement, movement have different uh, uh, units, so angstrom and degrees, so they have different uh, um, uh, order. And uh, is uh, important also to plot, and I think that is the main reason why um, the stiffness is uh, important, uh, is to compare each base pair, uh, for, for example, here is for the base pair uh, uh, parameter shift, along the sequence. Why? Because for the user, it will be easier to spot, mainly for an experimentalist, will be easier to spot a flexible step that will be easier to distort if uh, um, will be uh, to form, for example, a complex, or will be the part in which the motion of the DNA will go um, through. As uh, has been shown before for uh, um, the um, base step parameters. Also for the stiffness, we have the values calculated by the user in red, uh, the PARM BCC uh, that is uh, um, the stiffness uh, uh, parameter uh, for naked DNA in uh, green, and in blue for CHAM, so using another uh, two different uh, DNA phosphate. This comparison is very important, first of all, uh, to see if the user is doing something wrong in case he's repeating a study, or uh, if uh, to show like maybe uh, the sequence, the environment, or the condition of the particular trajectory that is running the user are different, so the stiffness of the DNA change, and this is important to, um, uh, to focus on uh, these uh, changes. Um, I will show you now an example on how in our group we use the knowledge of the stiffness to predict and compare experimental results. Uh, this uh, work is uh, published uh, in uh, the article DNA structure direct positioning and mitochondrial uh, genome packaging protein uh, um, that have been published this year. And uh, here is uh, uh, an example on uh, 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 here is an example of the structure of the um, of the DNA that is bound to a particular protein that is the ABF2P. Uh, the complex is formed by two main boxes, the MGG1 and MGG2, and these two boxes have an insertion, you can see in, uh, in blue, the um, residues that insert into DNA and they kink the DNA. Um, this kinking, uh, this uh, insertion, provoke on the DNA a high, um, high band, and here you can see on the right in the plot um, an increase of role uh, compared to the um, uh, naked unbound structure. How did we use the flexibility to uh, um, for this complex? So um, we predicted. Uh, running just the unbound uh, uh, DNA, that uh, the sequence, the base pair with the high uh, high flexibility, so easily to distort with low uh, co stiffness constant, will have been the TAAT, um, where you can see here close the um, green arrow or uh, yellow arrow. And so we predicted that this would have been the site of insertion of the base pair, while um, the stretch of a polyattract followed by a T-tract that is very famous also in nucleus positioning uh, to be a very rigid uh, stretch, uh, we predicted that it would have been in the region between the H and G box where the DNA is mainly straight. And as you could see, our prediction have been um, uh, confirmed by the X-ray crystal structure. So this is a nice study to show how the flexibility and the equilibrium um, uh, parameter of the DNA can be used to predict and to confirm and to 
sometimes explain why we have uh, some positioning of the DNA with uh, the binding of a protein and why uh, this happens. Now I will go through uh, another uh, tool that is the um, Prince, another tool in uh, NFLEX that is used to um, calculate the principal component uh, of the system. So the principal component analysis uh, allows uh, to reveal the most important motion and uh, can be applied mainly uh, to protein and DNA. I, ju I want just to say briefly that, as I say, uh, um, in, uh, into the NFLEX, NF server, NFLEX server, uh, can be run a simulation of the N naked DNA, so unbound DNA, or also with protein. In case that uh, um, the simulation involves also the protein, it's possible to calculate the principal components also for the protein, not only for the DNA, to see the complementary uh, motion of both those uh, molecules. This um, Okay, principal component analysis uh, is basically a linear transform that extracts the principal vector of motion from the trajectory. Um, is uh, in particular in uh, in this case is an essential dynamics of the DNA, uh, since uh, with the principal component analysis, um, the essential motion of the DNA are extracted from a sample of uh, uh, conformation. The sample of conformation are mainly uh, the conformation along the trajectory. Uh, for uh, this, um, if I can show it more, it's not, okay. Here you will see a GIF, so you will see a representation of the motion of the DNA, and this is very important, first of all, because many times the DNA is put like a static molecule or um, straight molecule, and as you could see, uh, the molecule has a motion, and in a particular direction. And uh, having um, a motion in a particular direction could explain sometimes why the protein is binding in one uh, position or another, or why the DNA is easily uh, able to deform in, uh, to one conformation or another. Um, going back to the NFLEX uh, um, uh, web page, here you will have the possibility to select the animation mode. Um, each uh, mode is uh, associated with eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors, and only the first uh, 10 that describe the main motions of the principal components um, have been, uh, uh, can be selected, and the user could see the movement of the DNA along the trajectory, the main, uh, the main motions. Um, now, after describing uh, the DNA at the um, base pair level and the overall motion using the principal component analysis, I will go uh, through the um, microscopic, so the um, descriptor in NFLEX at atomic level. Um, I will start from um, the nuclear, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance observable. Um, NFLEX allows the user to compare the results of uh, the trajectory of the structure of the DNA or RNA to NMR studies, how uh, uh, nucleic acid, um, um, nucleic magnetic resonance observable that are the J coupling that uh, here is a description that you will find also in um, in uh, NFLEX uh, uh, help uh, um, part are scalar couplings between protons located uh, three bonds away, so can be described also by a dihedral angle through the so-called Carpelus uh, equation, and so can correlate the trajectory and the conformation along the trajectory and experimental data using NMR, and uh, also the NOEs. The NOEs um, is the nucleic uh, overhauser effect, is a transfer of magnetization from one uh, nuclear spin to another via cross re uh, relaxation, and um, the proton-proton distance derived by NOEs are most useful for NMR parameters for structure elucidation. So being able to extract uh, using NFLEX uh, uh, server, uh, NFLEX tools, um, the um, J couplings and NOE from the trajectory can allow the user to compare directly with NMR observable. Here is the graphical interface that you will see. 
there is the possibility to select uh, the proton proton position so uh, between the sugar the between the sugar at the base here is the sugar of the DNA and between uh, the sugar and the uh, base step. And also is uh, important that here you can select the hydrogen, the distances for NOEs and for J couplings for the um, uh, dihedra that you are interested. And uh, so the user can check uh, each uh, parameter, the NOEs or the J couplings, compare them with NMR structure. And this is, uh, has been uh, very useful uh, for uh, checking sometimes NMR structure, but mainly to refine a force field. Why? Because sometimes uh, building a new force field that is describing the DNA is uh, important to compare with NMR or with experimental structure and the ability to transfer from the trajectory to direct, uh, directly to NMR observables uh, allow to refine and to see where um, the trajectory is failing sometimes or has some uh, uncertainty uh, about the results. Um, now I will go through other atomic uh, um, analysis, that is the canonical hydrogen bond analysis of the DNA, the distances and the backbone uh, analysis. Um, this, uh, for people that is not very familiar with the DNA, is uh, the main pairing, is the Watson-Crick pairing, and are the hydrogen bond between two bases uh, of the DNA. And uh, um, NFLEX allows uh, to uh, monitor along the trajectory or uh, the average distance of the base pair canonical hydrogen bond. Uh, we found it very useful, for example, um, this analysis where we are analyzing complexes where the pairing is broken. So here you can see uh, X-ray crystal structure. This is the PDB ID if you're interested. And this is uh, uh, the unpairing of a base uh, that is called flipping out of a base, so out from the double strand. And usually it is caused by a protein. Here you can see in purple the image of the protein. Um, it is a very, um, uh, uh, it is uh, to gain more knowledge on the breaking of the base pair, um, it's interesting to run MD simulation on the complex and monitor along the time how the base pair can get closer or far away and how, for example, the protein is acting to open for the flip out and the flip in of the base per step. So this is one case in which this analysis of the breaking, so the, um, the distance of the uh, hydrogen bond is very interesting and has a very uh, important biological impact. But the user can also decide not only to monitor the distance of these particular atoms that are involved in the canonical hydrogen bonds in the base pair, but is allowed also to decide with, actual, with atom pair distance to monitor, and uh, this is uh, um, the, um, from the page of the web server. So here the user could introduce uh, the name of the atom one, atom two, and uh, uh, check the distances. And uh, for example, how along the simulation, some atom will get far apart or some atoms uh, will get uh, closer and how the conformation is changing uh, for some uh, um, during the um, MD simulation. Uh, a part of the distances, what can be analyzed as the hydrogen bond and stacking energy. So we have a description at the atomic level, not only of the distance, so the geometry, but also of the energy. What can be analyzed as the hydrogen bond uh, um, stacking energies, uh, so the average, the minimum, the maximum, and the standard deviation, so how much they variate along the time. These are the four possibilities. Um, one case where we found very useful uh, to calculate the hydrogen bond and the uh, pi stacking, so the stacking between the base pair, as you can see here, or the hydrogen bond are the same one that I show you before, has been for uh, the airpin. Airpin is a very particular complicated structure, is an example of uh, um, X-ray crystal structure, and um, uh, the airpin uh, um, is uh, important to analyze the energetic and the uh, uh, distance uh, because uh, um, having 
a very, very uh, significant stacking, as you could see, and many hydrogen bond. Many times it's important during the trajectory to uh, evaluate uh, which uh, um, energetic component is the one that is stabilizing the, the complex. And uh, for example, uh, have been um, studied and we run also simulation using our newly refined uh, force field and we'll see that uh, many times is the stacking energy that is stabilizing the complex more than the hydrogen bond but clearly this change along the MD simulation and is important to analyze how these two complementary forces are, uh, in, are um, involved to uh, the stabilization of the complex. Um, the last um, uh, descriptor, so the last uh, uh, analysis that can be done on the DNA, here you can see the double strand, as I say before, this is the backbone that is composed uh, by the phosphate and the sugar, and these are the basis of the DNA. And uh, the backbone can be described by six main torsion angles around the covalent bonds and by the uh, sugar puckering. Um, here you can see all the descriptors, so the uh, sugar puckering, here is the conformation of the sugar, here in north, here in south, and mainly four conformations are dominating the conformational space. Here are the other angles, the five uh, angles uh, that, uh, and the canonical, for example, alpha and gamma torsion uh, that have been uh, important in the formation of several proteins in a complex. For example, when we are analyzing a complex, it could be interesting to see how these two angles are uh, variating on how the protein is affecting these angles on not only on the, on, uh, the backbone, so not only on the um, conformation at the base pair level as we have seen before. And also we can analyze the B1, B2 uh, population are experimentally known to exist at 80-20, so it's interesting to see how these two conformations can change in uh, the particular case of a uh, user. We use these uh, uh, tools to analyze the uh, backbone angle. Uh, now we'll show an example uh, to test a long time scale MD simulation and to compare the results um, of the geometry of the DNA at different uh, environmental condition. Uh, here is um, the work that uh, has been done uh, by um, our group, in particular by Pablo Danz, and here is the with they did the analysis um, of uh, a long time scale molecular dynamic simulation of Dudrickerson do the camera. Du Dickerson do the camera is. Um, um, the um, DNA prototypical BDNA that uh, have been tested uh, uh, experimentally uh, many times, so there are a lot of experimental data available, and uh, um, have been uh, is one of the main uh, um, chain of DNA that can be used uh, to test and to validate, for example, force field or how the DNA can behave in different uh, ionic environment. In this case, um, we tested the newly parameterized force field PARM BCC1 and in a variety of ionic environment. And here, for example, you can see the time evolution of epsilon and zeta uh, to be um, for the different base pairs, so it's on the C3 to the uh, G10, uh, and this is the time evolution. Uh, and uh, we did the study to be sure that uh, the DNA was exploring the canonical BDNA subset um, in using different uh, environment. And we have seen also that only the cytonins and the gui uh, guanin are more, uh, have more propensity in the transition between B1 and B2. Uh, here you can see also for example, for the same study, I don't know if it's very visible. Um, here we monitor the six base pair parameters, so shift, slide, and rise up pan in and the upper panel, and the bottom panel tilt, roll, and twist. Uh, we monitor the base pair parameters of Dito the camera using different ion. Um, uh, 
environment, so with potassium, with sodium, at different concentration, so only uh, neutralizing the DNA at uh, physiological, physiological concentration uh, 0.15 molar or at high ionic concentration. So uh, here we studied how the DNA can behave, it can, for example, increase or lower the stiffness or can open some base pair or the position of the ions can influence the geometry at the base pair level for all the simulation, always using um, NFLEX. Um, the last uh, case that uh, I'm going to show you is how we use NFLEX to compare uh, the protein bound versus the unbound uh, DNA conformation. Here is the structure that I showed you before uh, to see how um, the DNA is highly bent into this uh, protein DNA complex. And here, for example, for the parameter role, we correlated uh, the role for the uh, naked unbound DNA. So uh, here you can see in average uh, the red um, uh, values for each base pair uh, for the naked DNA with the standard deviation in pink. And in blue, the role value uh, for the DNA uh, in the protein complex. So as you could see, there are, for example, some steps where the protein is just acting, pushing, opening a bit uh, the raw values, but the role is already, has already high values in the naked DNA. But here we could see a big difference where the protein is uh, acting strongly on the DNA, lowering uh, the role. We also uh, notice that uh, uh, this uh, big change is happening at the TA step that is usually um, uh, characterized by um, low stiffness constant, so high flexibility, so it's easier for the protein to act on this step and to uh, close the role for uh, this step. So it's nice uh, to compare how there are some uh, ability of the uh, DNA, so properties of DNA that are intrinsic uh, to bend um, and to form the um, protein DNA complex and uh, places where the protein is acting to form the complex. We also studied um, for this complex how uh, the variation for each uh, base pair uh, of the um, backbone angle, here you can see epsilon, and uh, uh, here you can see how in red uh, the unbound DNA and the conformation of the DNA uh, in the X-ray crystal structure and um, how the X-ray crystal structure is inside the standard deviation of the um, of the unbound DNA. So the, in this case, the protein is acting directly at the base pair level, but is not affecting at all the um, angle of the backbone of the of the structure. Um, this is a summary of uh, all the software uh, that uh, are involved in the are implement, are, um, part of NFLEX and for example we have uh, curves uh, that uh, used to analyze the base pair parameters, uh, there is um, uh, PCA suite that is a program that has been used to analyze the principal component analysis. Uh, TLIP that is uh, part of AMBER to, uh, for the setting up of the system for the trajectory. And uh, all uh, uh, these um, NFLEX can uh, be also found uh, in a comprehensive platform, uh, Big Nassim, uh, that uh, includes a database system and an analysis por uh, portal for handling uh, nucleic acid simulation. So in um, uh, in this uh, uh, web server interface, you could find MD simulation of a variety of unbound and protein bound DNA, like for example, the Judica Sondo de Kammer that I just show you in different environmental conditions, uh, the airpin that I show you before, and all the uh, simulation are uh, accessible. And above all, here is uh, um, a screenshot of the Big Nassim uh, web, se web server interface and uh, for each simulation uh, NFLEX uh, tools have been applied so we have um, available our all the data, our all the analysis of uh, um, NFLEX. Um, finally, uh, the um, uh, NFLEX 
uh, is also one of the analysis tools in uh, a project uh, providing uh, uh, tools and infrastructure to integrate the navigation in genomic data from the nucleic acid sequence to the chromatin level. So in the multi-scale complex genomics uh, uh, project and in particular um, in its uh, uh, virtual resource uh, environment, it's possible to have tools to analyze uh, DNA uh, and RNA but mainly DNA from the atomistic uh, level uh, till the uh, genomics uh, scale. These are all the tools that are integrated in the VRE of uh, MOOG and uh, here for example you could see that there is NFLEX for the analysis of the DNA at the base pair and the atomic level, MDWeb to be able to run simulation at uh, um, atomic level of uh, uh, DNA strand or uh, going uh, um, closer to the genomic scale, there are consgrain models to analyze the nucleosome dynamics uh, till uh, tools and software to analyze um, experimental data at genomic uh, level. Um, I would like to acknowledge and to thank uh, uh, my group and uh, the Professor Modesto Rosco and uh, Joseph Luis Gepi for um, starting this big project and in particular Adam uh, Ospital for um, that is um, the, the person that is developing uh, these, uh, um, these uh, servers that allow the user to get closer uh, to MD simulation and to the analysis tool for uh, uh, nucleic acids and uh, if you have uh, any question now I know that there will be time for questions, uh, but if you have specific question or you want to talk uh, with us directly, you can go in the BioExcel forum, here is the web page, and at the Molecular Dynamics Novi User G, uh, you can see for example here the link to the talk that I'm giving just right now, here is the BioExcel webinar uh, given by, for example, uh, for, um, by um, Adam Hospital on the MD web, as I told you before. And here, uh, if you have any question, you can log in and uh, you can uh, contact us uh, uh, directly. So uh, thank you for the attention. And if you have uh, any question, I'm here. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's a very clear talk, um, but uh, I, I hope we will still have a question or two from the floor. Uh, I know that some people arrived um, after I described how to do this so uh, just to, to recap if you have any questions then you can you can type them into the question box in, in go to webinar um, so uh, if you type your question there then I can either open the microphone and uh, you can ask your question directly to Federica or um, I can read out your question so that you can answer it so if anybody has any questions you can type them into the box now um, while people are doing that or while they're, they're thinking of anything they might want to to ask or, or comment on um, then uh, I'll ask one quick question uh, so Federica it, it looked to me that uh, one of them the main advantage of this is that it sort of makes it much much clearer for for novice users as to how, how to get access to all of these tools and how to to step through these these steps, and um, you also showed a, a list of all the different pieces of software that are, are have been put together to to create this, which was quite an impressive list. Um, is is the source code for uh, any flex itself available? If you know if people are interested in, in seeing behind the scenes how these things are working, or or is it uh, or is that not the case at the moment? Um, for what I know, I'm not the developer of the web page, of the web server, but for what I know, the source code is uh, not available. I mean, all the programs that uh, you will see in the web page are easily downloadable um, and uh, it's just a way to facilitate uh, the analysis because the user doesn't have to download and can work directly uh, yes. using uh, our, uh, our web page, uh, but uh, the there is not an available source code for the for the web page. But uh, any question, okay. any any question that uh, the people can have, for example, on the um, 
on how all these uh, programs are connected together can be asked in the forum or can be asked to us directly and uh, we can provide uh, any information. Yeah, no, I think, uh, think I, I mean, I was sort of thinking that question really more out before I saw the slide where you showed all the, the software that was involved because uh, I, I only asked the question because uh, in the past we've had some um, some scientists who feel less ready to use a web portal because they're 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 less sure about what what code is actually running when they when they're when they're doing something you know what method is actually being used but since all the code is available as open source I think that's uh, that's quite obvious. Yeah, yeah, well, the program great. open source, so a person can just compare the result. For example, if they're not sure, in any case, they can compare the results downloading the um, the software. Yeah. But in uh, in any case, are uh, is uh, is like uh, is easy, for example, to visualize and to use them directly from the server than to download them directly. There are there are not step uh, um, like where well, there is a direct calculation and direct plot, and also all the raw data that are calculated can be downloaded so the person can see directly yes. if uh, um, they are plotted correctly and they can plot by their own so there are not uh, uh, many filters from the program to the visualizations. Yeah that's good to know. Yeah thank you. Um, so uh, I'm as you can probably tell I'm not a direct expert in, in the, the scientific application area that uh, Federica is, is talking about here so um, I, I don't have any particularly detailed questions, but I was wondering if anyone else from the, the floor would like to, to ask a question. Um, do we have any more just now? So f feel free while I'm wrapping up to, to sneak in a last minute question if you want. Um, but other, otherwise, uh, we're getting close to the, the top of the hour now. And as Federico has pointed out, there are plenty of um, options for you if, if a question occurs to you later on. So please do keep in touch with us if there's anything else that you would, would like to ask about. Um, but if we have no other questions from the floor, I'd like to thank you all for coming along this afternoon. And uh, I hope you will keep in touch with what BioXL is doing. Uh, and um, you can catch up again with the video when it's posted online uh, in a few um, in a few days time. So thank you all very much for coming along this afternoon. Thank you Federica for a very interesting talk and uh, yes everyone please do keep in touch with BioXL. Thank you.